okay for the example i i loaded the, the react score from the week 11 uh, uh, repository in uh, in the in the editor and uh, in the right hand side here i have, I have two terminals i have a terminal and some files from the server side and i have a terminal and uh, some files from the client side i try to work uh, with this uh, to to <laughs> to make it more clear for me uh, on which side i am okay basically um so if we start the server the server is nothing more than what we already had uh, last week sir. Uh, yes i am recording Kevin, uh, on the not with zoom but uh, with the obs so don't worry um I was saying uh, I can start the server, not more. And it's nothing more than the server that we already had uh, two weeks ago. So if you want, uh, I created uh, an API test .http file. So that if you want to to test uh, uh, the different uh, APIs, uh, and you can you see that they are working. And so we can use it also if we want to remember, okay, exactly what are the type of, of objects uh, and so on that are returned. Okay. So we have the login here, and we have the, um, the the results of the API if we want to test them. But basically, we are not going to work on the server side. Okay, we are working on the application. <coughs> sorry, to be able to uh, to call the server. Uh, so let's maybe make more space for the front end, knowing that back end is there and is still running. Okay, um, on the application. Right now, the application is working with fake data. Okay, so we should uh, modify it so that it will work with real data. This means uh, hydrating the state uh, from the server at uh, the mount time of the component. Okay, so following our architecture, uh, maybe we create an api.js file where we will store all the functions that uh, uh, call the fact uh, to, to the server side, okay? So, uh, when we'll, we'll try to implement them one by one when, when, when we need it, okay? So, uh, first of all, what do we need to load? Uh, we need to load in some way the courses and the exams. Uh, the courses uh, right now, they are fake here in this array and we want to remove this fake array from the code and load the, a real local copy of, of the list of courses where into a state variable so we didn't have a state variable right now because we didn't have any mechanism for changing the course but right now we need it so we can add a state so i delete the fake courses so that I'm, I'm sure that i will never reuse this information again and I will use, uh, I will declare a new state with courses, set courses. New state, empty. Hmm? An empty list of objects. And also for the exams that we I see on the next line, uh, I have a use state from initializing from fake exams and can remove it and initialize it from the empty list. And so also the fake exams uh, are gone okay um, okay now I need to load so I in uh, I need also oh, it's courses I'm missing an error here and uh, there are some syntax error because in some cases later on I were I was using fake courses directly so I replace it with courses Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so I could uh, run this application right now, and it should be able to do nothing, but it will work probably. npm start. Okay, it's a bit large okay and of course it's empty because we didn't uh, uh, load anything yet okay let's always keep the console open so that we can see the errors so we replaced uh, the fake courses with two empty state arrays 
we need to of course rehydrate this state arrays from the server as soon as the, um, the application is loaded so let's first uh, load the list of courses for example so we can load them into a user factor uh, that will run only once at the beginning of the component at the, at the mount time of the component so we can have a, a um, callback that runs only at mount time so load uh, rehydrate the courses at mount time Uh, use effect of course needs to be imported here use effect and use state from react and here we need to call an, a function to uh, to give me the list uh, the, the json basically from the list courses call so we have the list courses here that returns this structure there's a bit uh, of a of, um, of, um, uh, detail where the database uses uh, code here for representing the course code and inside the application inside the components in, in react uh, we are we decided to use course code and not just code so let's remember to do, do this conversion when we load and write uh, uh, data on the server okay um, so let's write uh, the, a function in api function you know load all courses for example Okay, and this function uh, should be exported, uh, of course, uh, uh, in order to for app uh, to be able to see it. Hmm? So export uh, load all courses. Okay, um, and what do we do in, inside this function? Okay, we call the uh, sync uh, the fetch uh, methods. Uh, maybe we can store a const a url for example for remembering the server address http localhost 3000 okay so that we don't have to repeat it every time and it will be easy to change and uh, in this case it's easy because we have just to return a response from a fetch for URL plus API slash courses and we await for this I find it easier to use await rather than using then okay and after of course, uh, if, if since I'm using my wait, uh, I need to define this function to be a sync. Uh, sorry, a sync function. Okay, and uh, uh, once I have the response, I can extract uh, the the object from the JSON. So the const would be the courses can be extracted for the for the uh, weight from response.json remember response.json returns a promise that processes the body of the response and so once I have these courses I can return them uh, but, or, um, I can return them to, to the caller uh, just remember that we have this problem with the name of the course code so i cannot really return exactly this item i need to rename uh, some of the attributes so well and uh, not really coursey but i need to do a, a, a map just to rename a course into an object where i have all the attributes of course plus oh sorry i need to have a round parameters for returning an expression and then the braces for returning the object and uh, I have the course code c.code 
So in a way, I'm creating a course code attribute by using the code value. And I'm missing a closing parenthesis. Okay, so this is just a, uh, uh, is that required because I need to rename the code attribute into course code. So I copy all the attributes because they are the same and I create a new one with the correct name. Just a stupid me because I called the server, the, the, the JSON interface object in a slightly different way from the React attributes. We could go and modify all the components, but it's better. It's also normal that you have some objects in your uh, application that don't exactly match the structure of the object from an external API. And so you need to do some adaptation also in this uh, API file. Uh, of course, uh, you are telling me that I'm not doing any error handling. Uh, so let's remember it. Let's first focus on the functional aspect, and then, of course, we need to all, uh, add all the extra cases. Hmm? But for the moment, let's assume everything is right and see how it proceeds. So we have this function. We can try to call it here. So we can uh, call this function. Remember that uh, we are inside an effect, so we cannot call uh, we cannot use a wait, okay, because we cannot declare this uh, as uh, asynchronous. So we, we may use, for example, a, a then, coach, uh, then catch syntax if you want. Uh, so we have the we import uh, the function that is called load all courses from. Uh, API dot slash API okay remember you need dot slash to load from the local project because otherwise it will try to load from node modules hmm, from the library and so we can call this load all courses and then when the promise is fulfilled not there then we update the state. So in this, we can take the courses and simply, no, let's use a different name for avoiding a conflict with the same variable. C, new, C, set courses, new C. Okay. This is the minimal. Again, here, maybe we have some errors that we don't want to check, but this should be the minimal uh, code. Uh, if we go to the client, uh, there are some problems here or not. There's an error when we try to do this get. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, there's, a, ah, there's an error here in the JSON parse. Uh, sorry, three, so. So you see that I'm, we are calling uh, um, courses here in the when we load the application. So this API is being called. And we see that the problem we have in this call here is that uh, response here. You need, ah, okay. You need to enable JavaScript to run this app. Ah, okay. Sorry. I forgot. No, no. Okay. You're right, Alessio. Um, I, I called the wrong server. Okay. Um, from the API, I should call the, the other server, which is running port 3001, but I forgot to set the proxy in the, the, in the React development server. Okay, so I'm calling React itself, I'm not calling the other server. I cannot uh, write a 3001 because there will be two servers and it would, it would break the same origin uh, constraint and I will not be able to do the, the call. But I can just go to the package, the JSON, and add the proxy specification like we learned last week proxy 
and goes to localhost HTTP localhost 3001 um, yeah comma so we may rerun Okay, uh, did it work? We don't know. We can check the component and in app we see that we have a state which is filled with the list of courses. Good. Okay. So we know that the app or uh, we are not displaying anything yet because we are displaying the exams. So at this point we should lead, uh, load the second state that will be the exams. You see these hooks here display the different slots, one, two, three, that we discussed before. Uh, and there is no information about the name of the state. So the, only the order counts, okay? Just to reinforce what we saw before. So uh, it's easy. We do the same thing with the, um, with the um, exams. So we create a second function for loading the exams. And the API is different. And again, we do this game here. It will not be courses, but will be exams, just for clarity. Here, there, and not C, but E for exam. But basically, it's a cut and paste. And also, we can return load all exams. And we copy the same also, the same loading code also on in, uh, in API. Rehydrate as a Y. Um, when sh we should rehydrate uh, um, exams? For sure at mount time. Uh, and also when the courses change. And when courses change. Okay, uh, they are independent. They could be independent uh, um, uh, objects, but we may add that when after the courses are loaded, we want to refresh uh, the the exams. Otherwise, we risk having to load some exams and uh, without having the courses ready yet, and so we cannot uh, display the names of the courses, for example. So when the courses are loaded, then we need to refresh uh, the list of exams because exams, in a way, are using some some data, some information from the courses. So here we can have, we should have the courses as a dependency, but we remember that we don't want to list uh, uh, arrays as dependencies, and so we put maybe, for example, the length of the courses. So this means that uh, if when the say the um, uh, the first run we are executing these two effects in parallel, in a way. Then, if the first effect uh, finishes, when the first effect finishes, the course state will uh, change from an empty array to the, list, the actual list of courses, and so the length of this array will change, and we call this uh, API a second time, possibly. Or we may decide to delay its loading. So let, let's, let's see probably in the in the code. So um, not load all courses, but load sorry all exams. So it's new exams set exams new exams. So let's see what happens now. Okay, I have right right now this list of exams. In the app, we have the two states, the courses, and the exams below that. Okay, so we just refresh that. If we have a look at the network panel, 
let's try to reload the application from scratch okay you can see what happens at the network level so okay the bundle contains all the application we made an api call here of courses oh sorry go away of courses and then exams and we see that uh, later on we called exams again it's a second call that was uh, uh, triggered by uh, the completion of the first one okay so basically we are calling exams uh, once more than strictly needed if we want we could delay we could uh, say prevent the first call for happening say okay well, let's uh, only load the exams uh, after the courses are finished because uh, after the first call, we, we will have no way of showing this string here. Remember, we have only the code. So it will be, for a slightly moment, uh, we have, a, um, say, a, a wrong table to be displayed. Okay. So, for example, we, have, we may avoid to, to load the exams until the courses are loaded. And we can just add a condition if courses are length. then do all of this so so at the first run remember all effects always run at mount time but i want to avoid running this at mount time i want only to run it after uh, i have some information available and so i have some other condition that checks whether the courses data already arrived or not so if I'm reloading this up, this new new version of the application, I reload it here. We see that we have a courses call, of course, and only one exams call. So I got rid of, of the first exams call that uh, was too early, basically, hmm, to call. In this case, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but we are trying, uh, as I said, to exploit the exercise also for trying to check some cases that you may uh, encounter in the future. Um, OK, we could also uh, decide. So right now we are loading the data. But and every time, let's throw away this, which is not. We are rendering the home page here, the exams course table. So actually, we are trying to render it even we, when the exams is, is still empty and when the courses are still empty. So one possibility could be also to avoid showing this and only, only say, OK, right now I'm only loading the data. And they will show the exams course only when the, loaded, uh, the data has been fully loaded. So, for example, in the initial loading of the page, we, we show some, let's say, uh, intermediate information. How to do that? Okay, we, for doing that, we could, uh, uh, we should use an extra uh, flag that will tell me whether uh, true whether the application still loading is still loading at mount so initially this will be true and if this is true we don't try to render the table because it will be empty it's true at the default and after we finish loading all the courses and all the exams Okay, after loading all the exams, we can set this loading to true. So in this then branch, we should also um, set the loading to false. We are no longer loading because now we have the data. So uh, we can just put a couple of braces here so that in these after this promise has returned, after we have the courses, we can also set loading to false. And we can, and right now, we can use the, this flag that starts true, becomes false, and then remains false forever. 
to prevent the, the table for, from ever showing. Uh, so, for example, here we have if uh, uh, if it's loading, then you can write uh, maybe please wait, and uh, otherwise uh, the the old code that we had here. Okay, so we are a conditional render depending on the loading variable. If we are still loading, then we see please wait, and when the loading becomes true, we start rendering the, the exam scores table for the first time, basically, only when loading becomes true. Let's see if we can appreciate the difference. We try to reload it here. Uh, you may be faster with your eyes and see that the uh, Please wait, appear for a split second when we load the application initially. And so we don't try to, to have a, we don't risk of rendering an empty, uh, um, uh, an empty table or to access some data inside the list, which is not, which still has zero element that will create some, uh, some exceptions in our code. Okay. Okay, that's uh, easy because we are just loading initially. Then, how, what, what function can we add? For example, the addition of a new component. Okay, right now we know that uh, we can add it, but the addition is just local. We are just modifying the local state. And we know that if we refresh the application, the addition is lost. So we want to um, store it in the server state. And this is the same for uh, add, uh, update, or delete, no? what we are trying to do it whenever we need to modify the state. So modifying the state in app is already encapsulated into one callback method, method which is called add exam, which right now is only doing the set exams code here locally. Of course, we want to set <laughs> store the new exams into the server so i go into api.js and i declare another function i may call it add new exam add new exam and i can and of course it will get one parameter which is the exam object okay uh, what should i do in this function uh, call the fetch post for adding a new exam. So in our API list, I have this sort of request that I should make onto the server. Okay, so I need to uh, response, create the fetch, await fetch. In this case, I need to use two parameters. The first one is the URL, and the second one is the initialization object with uh, that contains the body and the content type header that are both uh, needed. Okay. So uh, the first parameter of the fetch is the URL. URL plus slash API slash exams, and the second parameter is the initialization object for the request. I need to set at least uh, uh, the method that is post. Then I need to set the header. Con sorry, it's a comma, not a semicolon. Then I need and a, and, and a colon here instead of an equal. Sorry. OK. Uh, the second uh, uh, is uh, the headers. So whenever I make a post, I always should do this trick. And uh, the header that I'm concerned with is the content type that should be set to application.json. At this point, we can set the body of the request with a JSON stringify. 
of exam uh, well, well where <laughs> we need to rewrite again the course code into code so we need to do the the the, the other conversion okay so we can stringify not the exam but an object that contains the exam field plus a, a I'm passing an extra variable. I hope, I hope uh, the server is fine with having extra property that it doesn't need. Uh, the property is code, but in my object it was called exam.coursecode. Okay, so this should do, and we'll discover it soon. Once we have this response, uh, we can tell the 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 caller. Uh, if it went, ran, uh, went well or not, okay? So we can return maybe an error object uh, or our, uh, um, a good or bad indication, okay? For, so we can, for example, one possibility, uh, let's write it here, uh, send a post API exams, returns an error object if something is wrong and returns null if everything is okay. So there is no error. Hmm? For example, we just need to set up our own convention for calling our own API functions how to return the information. And so, for example, we can have if uh, uh, response.ok, then we can return null. And uh, in, in, the, in other cases, uh, we can return, uh, uh, if response is not ok, we can return an object uh, with an error message. Mm. Post error. Mm. Just for writing something. Uh, what's wrong here? Ah, semicolon should not be there. Okay, something like that. We can add this. Uh, I, I don't like too much, uh, so I'm doing a, a little modification, having uh, exporting a lot of symbols from a, from a, uh, a module, and then these symbols are just all, all of them just important like that, okay? Uh, what I prefer to do is, uh, but it's just a personal preference, so you do as you want, uh, create a, a, a single object, uh, uh, that contains all these properties and then I prefer to export this single object export default because I only have one uh, so I don't need to do anything extra when I add new methods because I'm only exporting one object that contains the properties I just need to add one property and also on the client side uh, this just simplifies to import API and uh, it looks more object-oriented, let's say. And so it's not lot, co lot all courses, but will be API dot lot all courses and API dot lot all exams. So it reminds me where these functions are from. So when I'm defining a lot of callbacks and a lot of functions, having API dot something remembers me that, okay, we are calling the server here. Huh? But it's just a personal preference. Do, do whatever you, you feel better, okay? So in this case, we are trying to do some post when we add an exam. So we are back at the, at the point where we... Uh, so let's assume that okay, it's, we are okay with modifying the list of exams locally, but of course we need to call uh, the add the new exam by passing our exam object to the server. Hmm? This uh, add new exam returns a promise and uh, so we can uh, so we are in a this is a callback okay we are calling the fetch from the callback 
there are discussion whether it's better to call the API from a callback from an event handler directly or it's better to set a state that will trigger an event that will do the fetch hmm. um, maybe it's more clean because the fetch will only happen inside an event but it's also be more less readable because you have this extra flag that you need to manage there is no consensus in uh, in develop in react developers of which is their best combinations of, of um, or where to put fetches in this case i find it quite natural to call the fetch immediately as the user clicks on the button okay and so i don't feel any anything wrong to create some side effects directly from an event handler um, and uh, okay when this uh, happens we need to refresh the data so right now we are saving the data on the server we are updating the data on the client and also we are updating it on the server it's if, if, if everything is okay of course but then we need to be sure to refresh the local data remember that the local data is now dirty okay so what I could do very easily is uh, create another state here with remembers whether the local set of exams is dirty. So initially it is not. Huh? But we may very easily uh, ask that we want to um, refresh the data every time dirty is true how can we do that very easily because we have an effect that is already ready for refreshing the exams we just have to add the dependency on dirty so in this case whenever i set or in changing dirty i'm calling this effect of course, uh, the effect should be really reloaded only if uh, the component is really dirty. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Oh, sorry, so in this case, I should set it to true initially, yes. To true initially. Uh, because I want to, uh, at amount time, I need to do that. I need to read it. Or, yeah, if I have at least one course and uh, I know that the courses uh, need to be refreshed. And uh, after I, I set the exams, uh, so I loaded all of them into the application, I could set the dirty to false. And why do I set it to true? Uh, initially, sorry, initially, it, it's true by default. After the first load, it becomes false. It's no longer dirty. But whenever I do a push, where's the post code? Uh, at exams here. Whenever I do uh, the post, I need to refresh the data. I should not call, just beware, this wrong, what I'm trying to write, uh, this one. Set dirty, uh, true. Do you see what's wrong with this code? So I'm calling the post for uh, storing the new data on the server and then setting dirty to true so that i will immediately do a get that will refresh the data but this is wrong yeah this is wrong because add new exam is a promise so we, i'm starting the fetch and so I, I must be sure not to load the new uh, courses until the, f the post has completed to save it. 
okay so uh, writing something after an asynchronous function doesn't guarantee that the code will be executed after that so i need to chain it with an await or with a then and let's put it here so in this case when we are sure that the okay i of course you should uh, this uh, returns an object uh, an error and i can do something with this error in this case i know that in every case uh, it's better to reload it so i can manage the error and then reload the data hmm? so let's see if it's working or not reload by being extra careful I add something more. Let's have a look also at the network. Okay. Courses, exams. Add something. Save. When I click on save, let's have a look at the, what the browser does. It does a post on exams and a get on exams immediately after. And we have the information refreshed here. Okay. Uh, we didn't see it, but uh, if we try to maybe slow artificially the post, make it much slower than it really is, uh, we will see that the table is filled immediately and then is updated from the get. Uh, maybe we can play a trick with API.js uh, by returning later. So, for example, just, just for seeing what happens if the post is low to return, okay? Uh, let's uh, add some delay here in the client. Set timeout. Uh, of return null. No, it doesn't, sorry, it doesn't work because uh, cannot do this because it's a return instruction so it would return from a callback and not for the I need to to delay the whole code okay let's do this async function add new exam slow okay where I set the timeout and I call basically add new exam. Uh, with the same parameter. After one second. OK. So I wait one second and then do the post. I'm trying to simulate a slow server. OK, and uh, I modify the front end to call this uh, slow version instead of, real, of the real one. Hmm. If we have a look at the front end, what we see, so I'll reload it for being extra sure. We can add a new exam. something wrong here the post goes through but uh, it doesn't reload why um, what's wrong here Dirty is false. If I load the, the data went through, so I have the four the four data. So this uh, I have some problem with dirty that is is being set to true. And uh, does it run too soon? Probably no.
and then the also the new exam should appear immediately so probably have some bug that we didn't see so what's happening here adding the post goes through and you see that the get happens before the post so probably is there we have some uh, Said dirty true, it happens too soon. All the exams, uh, well, I need to check it, okay? Because in the in the real time, it's uh, it's working correctly. In the slow version, maybe I, I did some mistakes. Hmm? So let's let's return to the normal version, and uh, of course, I will try to 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 um, to understand it uh, before publishing the final version, okay? But I don't want to take your time right now. So system device programming, it, happens, it reloads immediately here after the post. Uh, ah, yes, it may, may, it may be possible, yes. Uh, I, it's, it's implementation of, uh, of the other flow that uh, I did some mistake for sure, because I just uh, make it uh, too quick. Hmm? Um, yes, Mattia, thank you. Probably is the, is the problem. OK. Um, and this is the same uh, uh, trick that we could do uh, with, all, with all the others. So for delete exams, uh, we do the same. We update the list uh, uh, say immediately in the front end, and then we can call an API that will uh, call the delete on the server, and then set the dirty flag to true, so that uh, um, uh, the, the, the exam list will be refreshed on the browser. Okay. Setting this uh, uh, also helps uh, in giving a visual feedback. Uh, for example, we may, we may want to show that a uh, given exam is uh, that I added to the table is still uh, temporary. Okay, it's still not valid, uh, not is not valid yet. And uh, uh, in this case, we could maybe add some flags here. So this exam uh, may contain some extra fields. So that the uh, rendering of the exam itself, maybe in the exam row, uh, the exam row could uh, use the information for maybe changing the color and you know, making it gray. You know, it appears in gray be because it's still uh, local, and then it will become, uh, uh, let's say, fully black and white. With the full color when uh, when the real data comes from the server. So what we can do is, and you will see that in the um, let's say in the in the code that will be the full code that will be published. So we are trying. I will be published in this code for today, and also will as 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 always in the other in the other repository publish the, the full version with all the functionalities implemented. And you see that also we have some extra attribute that we inject into the exam in order to give. Uh, a visual feedback uh, saying, okay, this is a new line, it's a temporary line, and then it will become uh, normal when uh, uh, we do that. We, another thing we could do is to pass the dirty flag to the rendering and say, okay, if the table is dirty, let's maybe disable the delete button, let's disable the edit button, so that the user cannot interact with the buttons until the previous, ver the previous action completed. So in a way, we should try to prevent uh, uh, that we are doing a second modification when the first one hasn't completed yet. And, and we can do that basically by propagating the value of these flags that are telling us that some operation is still in progress. And so we want maybe to limit uh, the, the other, um, say, actions from the user until the, the previous action is terminated. Okay. Um, Yes, sir. Um, and uh, there's, I think only one flag is needed in this case. Okay. So whenever this this dirty flag is basically the dirty flag for the exams. So exams are dirty. The exam list. So whatever you whatever method you use to modify the list of exams, you just set this single flag. 
you don't need the dirty flag for for, for deleted one for updating one for uh, adding because the effect that you want is just say okay this data structure this state is no longer valid I don't care about the reason why it's no longer valid because in, in any case I'm reloading it from the server. Okay, so only one flag is sufficient to, and this, this is the good part of uh, having uh, the rehydration of a state in a separate uh, effect because you can trigger this effect in many cases whenever you need it. And so you don't need to, the other possibility would be to do this uh, load all exams, uh, for example, here. In this then so why don't i load the exams here instead of doing the set dirty because i have the uh, the list that is always is able to self-update for many reasons i don't want to duplicate this logic here load exams set exams and so on inside the then of a promise of a callback where the logic will get lost huh? It's much better to say, okay, I have a state that is telling me whether some operation is in progress and some data needs to be reloaded or not. Hmm? Um, the only risk is that this, uh, as we already saw with the first example, this is just a Boolean. So if we have many operations in progress, the first one that finishes will set the dirty to false, uh, which is a problem. So if we can prevent other operation from starting so if it's dirty let's not add uh, i can idea will disable the add action or the delete action or uh, or we can make it more complex uh, like with counters like we started to discuss before let's just just remember that you will never find the perfect solution okay because in client server uh, you cannot handle uh, real concurrency okay so there will they always will be approximations or better approximation or better, better approximations of the of real behavior. But with our tools, uh, which to stop us sometimes, I say, OK, in, we are not making a real time video game. And so we assume that this will not is not going to happen. Hmm? Uh, this is just a limitation of the web technologies. Of course, uh, what we need to do and what you see also in the code that we'll publish is all the error handling because uh, Right now, we are being extra optimistic uh, that fetch never fails. And always we need to check both the return code of the fetch and the, um, the possible exceptions that are triggered by the fetch and map them into some objects that can be used by the user interface to, to show them. OK, this is uh, the long part of the code uh, that makes this class is unreadable, basically. Okay, because then you have 20 lines of code for error checking and uh, two lines of code for the real uh, execution. Mm -hmm. So I would always prefer trying to think about the architecture of the data flow. And then after everything is correct, uh, we can add uh, all the checks uh, that are, of course, uh, necessary and mandatory. But uh, if you start from those at the beginning, you, you risk of being uh, sidetracked uh, and lost uh, in all the possible exceptions all the possible combinations of errors we already have enough we already have enough combinations of good behaviors okay to make them right this happens before that and so on uh, so let's try it first to get the functional part uh, right and then we handle the errors and in many cases uh, when you have an error the reasonable choice is uh, restart reload uh, and try to reload if possible. Okay, uh, so this we try to move into a, a slightly bigger, larger architecture. What we did uh, with the, the simple ex example in, in the in the past case, uh, we you could also try to open two different browsers to look at, at the list of exams, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, you know that they they will not update. Uh, so maybe if you want to play, play with adding a timeout for refreshing the list uh, every now and then, it's also be uh, an, an opportunity, a possibility, okay, just to, to see how, how this thing works. Uh, apart from completing the exercise, I think the important part is to, to remember and reason about what is really happening when you're doing this sort of uh, asynchronous operations, okay, which uh, at the beginning really needs to be reasoned step by step, then it will become more a cut and paste uh, job because we 
basically the patterns uh, are more or less the same hmm? but at the beginning they are quite uh, um, complex because a lot of things are happening in parallel okay i will stop here um, for today and uh, of course the, the next uh, week in the lab you have to complete working on on, uh, on the apis uh, uh, while uh, in next week we will uh, tackle the, the last uh, topic basically which is the authentication so how to protect uh, with passwords uh, uh, the access to the websites and so we see a couple of libraries for doing that uh, which is the, the ingredient that we are missing still uh, in our applications and uh, that's uh, that's all for today